Today we're going to talk about uh, loving our cities because I know for a fact that the reason why Jesus did what he did was so that we could impact the world around us, not hide from it. God has not called Christians to separate themselves from the world, but to be in the world so that we can change the world. In fact, I believe that the church is the great change agent on the planet. And God has called us to that. That's part of our mission. And so I want to talk to you this morning about what does it mean for us to be that as Cardinia? What does that actually look like? How can we get involved in that? And, and where does the heart of that come from? Because we are meant to be making our cities great. How many of you believe that? Yeah. How many of you are trusting our politicians to make our cities great? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go down that rabbit, Warren. But the fact of the matter is, is it's actually not their job. It's our mandate as a church to improve and love on our city. Yes, yeah, come on now. You'll get it by the end, right? You'll all be all on board with that by the end. Uh, when Jesus gives us the great commission, he tells us to go into all the world, not escape from the world. Don't let the world touch you. Uh, don't let those, you know, the baddies touch you or those sinners uh, next time you wonder who's a sinner, just look in the mirror. Yeah. We're, all, we're all sinners saved by grace. Thank, thank the Lord. He loves us and, and hasn't disqualified us. But he calls us into, you know, he called us into Jerusalem, Judea, into the uttermost parts of the world. He called us into places, into cities, into towns, so that we could be change agents so that we could be a significant part of his mission. And can I say that everybody sitting here can do it. And effectively, my question at the end of all of this today is, are you willing to put your hand up to be a change agent to love our city and to see it loved for the sake of the cross and the sake of Jesus Christ? And so... I want to start off by, I guess, talking about having a heart to seek to do good in our cities. To be that group of people that actually seeks out the challenges in our cities so that we can have a positive influence. Jesus, during his years of ministry, traveled around the known world or his known world or his sphere. And everywhere he went, did he ignore people? Did he travel at night so that he wouldn't run into anybody? Did he cross over to the other side of the street whenever somebody would approach him and say, hey, hey, how's it going? Jesus made a point of interacting with people. He made a point of meeting people where they were and bringing the kingdom to them. Anytime he could. Even the crowds, he brought the kingdom to them. He had a way of valuing people, showing love to people. He was highly interactional. And this was very attractional to other people. Because who doesn't want to be loved? We should know that that's what people are looking for. And so... Paul highlights some of what this looks like in Romans chapter 12, verses 14 to 18. He says, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray for them that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to, the, to enjoy the company of ordinary people. You might want to highlight that one. Don't think that you know it all, Christians. Don't think that you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can do to live at peace with everyone. All right? And what, what, you, what you don't see in here is you must be able to proclaim the gospel message really clearly. 
It doesn't say that in there. Now, it's good to be able to do that. Obviously, we need to be able to share the message of Jesus. But this is a lot about acting a certain way, isn't it? This is a lot about how we choose to engage with people. Even people who are a challenge to us. Don't curse them. Pray blessing over them. Don't, don't we do that? <laughs> Through gritted teeth sometimes, right, John? Uh, oh, God, I just bless those people so much, so hard. Bless them, like, super hard. Um, just to, to be aware enough to weep with those who weep. To be sensitive enough to the emotions of somebody else that when they're going through a hard time, we go into their hard time. We meet them where they're at. All right, this is so much about how we act with other people. And Jesus just knew how to act with other people. This is kingdom culture. The way we treat others, the way we love others. May your kingdom come. May his kingdom come wherever you go. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Amen? That's us. We bring the kingdom. We're meant to bring the kingdom. We're meant to seek good for our cities and bring the kingdom everywhere we go. The next thing is this the city's problems are our problems. Whatever this city, whatever Geelong is challenged with, those are our problems. And one of the things that we, we see happening in the New Testament is they actually helped meet the physical needs, helped meet the challenges of the city that they lived in. They helped the widows and the orphans, those who couldn't help themselves, they helped them. All right, they didn't wait to be asked they just did it. They just felt compelled because they had experienced the love of Jesus Christ. It's reflected so much in the story of the Good Samaritan. I don't know if you've ever heard it, but there's this story of a guy who sees somebody who's been beat up and doesn't wait to get asked, doesn't help him because he's his friend. He just sees a need and does something about it because he has the means to do that, and so he does. And this is something that should be in the heart of all of God's people to be people who are responsive. And I know that I have said this before, but if I see somebody who needs a meal, don't pray for them. Well, after maybe. Just get them some food. Yeah? Yeah? If you see somebody in need, if you can see a physical need that needs to be met, that we would become people who are responsive. And here's the amazing thing that happens. As the testimony of the church grows, as the story starts to get around that the church is full of people who not just tell us that they love people, but actually love people, the church grows. All right? How do we know that? Acts chapter 6. Verses 1 to 7, or part of it anyway. At, at that time, as the number of disciples grew, Greek-speaking Jews complained about the Hebrew-speaking Jews. The Greek-speaking Jews claimed that the widows among them were being neglected every day when the food and other assistance was distributed. And so they did something about that. They made sure that the widows got food. And back in that culture, the widows didn't have access to a lot of things. And so they did something about it. And then later on, it says, God's word continued to spread. And the number of disciples in Jerusalem grew very large. A large number of priests even accepted the faith. As we respond to the needs of those in our community, the church grows. Right? Right? It's not because they had awesome Sunday morning services. Now we have awesome Sunday morning services, right? Let's just be honest. <clears throat> but it wasn't because they had awesome services. It wasn't because they had fantastic coffee. Even though I do believe in that. It was because they were a people of deed. 
They didn't just talk about loving people. They loved people. And when they found out about a need, they did something about that need. And I believe that as a church, we're not ever going to meet all the needs in our community. But where we can, we must. We must respond. We must uh, jump in and, and, and get into it to be part of a solution. We should care about those in need in our community. Amen? Let's not relegate that to social services or government. Let's be a people who do. And really, I believe or I think where some of this begins is differentiating between a consumer mentality, which our culture is promoting all the time, into a servant mentality. Where church isn't about me. It's not about what I get out of it. I don't go to a church because I like the songs or I like that guy's voice or they play guitar so well or, you know, they offer this program and that program or I love Pastor Richard's preaching and so I'm going to keep going back to that church. That's consumerism. That's a faith that says this is predominantly all about me and while I'm happy, I'll come and when I'm not happy, I'll change churches. Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve. To offer up his time, to offer up his energy, to offer up everything that he had, literally even his life, in the service of a much greater cause. Being part of our Cardinia Church programs, you know, putting your hand up to get involved in something like Christmas boxes or play groups, maybe even putting up your hand to work for the Early Learning Center is all just so that we can be part of being an influence in our city. Having impact and hear stories like what what Nathan shared this morning. You might never even hear those stories. But we do things in faith, believing we know there's a need. Let's do something about it. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to do something. And so I just want to read a, a passage out of Romans chapter 10, verses 14 to 15. It's not up on your screen. Um... But I just want to read this to you. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is why the scripture says, How beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring the good news. If we don't go, if we don't care, if we're not the ones, then who? Who will go? If we're not compelled, if we're not moved to do it, then who's going to be moved to do it? I believe that God has given a unique challenge to the church to be those who are moved to do, to act, to get involved. And so the big question, I guess, comes... How do we make our community better? How do we impact our cities? What do we do about that? And the fact of the matter is, is we've we've got programs and all that sort of stuff that we do here. And and my encouragement to you would be, you know, to, to hop on the website. If you would genuinely like to get involved. How many of you got a handshake from someone on our host team this morning? Aren't they lovely people? Yeah? Those are just people who said, you know what? I could shake hands in the morning. I could stand out there. I can do that. Just because they want to make other people's experience better. You see, it's shifting from that consumer idea to a serving idea. Or or maybe you want to get much more involved. Maybe you want to participate in our home groups more. Maybe you want to sign up for Christmas boxes and say, I want to be part of that. Maybe you want to sign up for a much more longer term idea like playgroups. Maybe there's something happening in our city that we're not doing something about yet. And God's really put something on your heart. I would love to have that conversation with you. Maybe there's a burden that God's put on your heart for a need that you know exists within our community and you're not sure anybody's doing something about it. Maybe 
there's something in that we just haven't started yet. You know, there, there are people who go around our streets in Geelong at night to give food to homeless people. We don't need to recreate that. We just need to just support them to do that. And maybe that's your thing and you're going to sign up and you're going to say, it's not Cardinia. It doesn't matter. <laughs> just as long as we're doing something. I, I would like for you to pray with me this afternoon. I'm going into Margany prison to preach. And again, to me, and I, I just feel compelled. We, we have places like that on our doorstep here in this city. And God, the Holy Spirit really challenged me to say, well, what are we going to do about that? And so I'm just believing and praying for open doors. That God is just going to open doors for, to minister to people, families, I don't know. But I'm going to do something. And so the heart of all of this to me, guys, is I, I'm, my job is not to, to manipulate you to say you should be doing something more, so you better sign up or else. My role is to tell you the truth about the heart of Jesus Christ and to let his great love for you inspire you to be compelled to get involved. That's it. It's not my job to motivate you that way. But I want to create a moment here right now that we would agree together to be part of changing our city. Yeah? And so my question to all of you is, who do you think is meant to be part of that solution? If you think that's you, can you put your hand up, please? Yeah, come on. It's okay. You don't have to be a, a scared. I was going to say a scared. Afraid, <laughs> I think is the word. I'm going to, let's all stand together. Can we all stand together? And, and again, if, you, if you're not feeling it, I, I don't, I'm not going to pressure anybody, but I just want to agree together. And if you're joining us online, this could be for you too. And maybe you're joining in from another community. It's not just about Geelong, believe me. It's about any community, anywhere, any group of people that is in need, uh, any, anyone that is marginalized, anybody that is struggling, that we could be an answer. We could impact them in very real ways just in how we love them and how we pay attention enough to see the need and then respond to the need. What I would love for us to do this morning is just join together and agree together to ask God to challenge our hearts so that we can love others the way that he loved us. So that we don't hold all of this great love to ourselves. But that we say, God, I'm so grateful for the love that you shared with me that I'm now going to share it with as many people as possible. I'm not going to hold it to myself. I am not going to be stingy with the love of God. I'm going to be generous with the love of God. And I am just going to start to pour that out onto other people. And when I see people in need, I'm going to do something about that. Can we join together and just believe for that and pray together for that? If you just want to raise your hands, you don't have to, but if you want to raise your hands, say, God, that's me. My hands are up too. I want to be a change agent. I, I want to be somebody who is known for how we love people. God, I thank you for the love of Jesus Christ. I thank you for this great mission that you sent us on, Lord God. I pray that we would capture the heart of what you came here to do, which is not uh, sit on and let other people serve, but to go out and serve other people, to go out and look for need, to go out and help other people, Lord Jesus. And I pray that as Cardinia, across all of our locations, that we would be a church that is known for how we love people. That we would be known because we act. People would know that they can rely on us to do something when people are in need. That they would know that we care. 
And in so doing, Lord God, that they would discover that you care, that you love them, that you want to do great and wonderful things in their lives because of how we shower your love on our community, Lord God. I pray that our hearts would be challenged to take up this challenge and to stop waiting and to start initiating, Lord God. That as you teach us your heart, that we would become ambassadors in the community of Geelong and the surrounds and everywhere else, Lord God, making impact, making change everywhere we go. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's just sing this this song just a few more times and then we'll close in prayer. But let's just give ourselves over to this and invite God to continue to change and challenge our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah.